All right, this fly is a little yellow stone fly, um, one that I use quite a bit uh, up in Rocky Mountain National Park. It floats real well. Uh, it's pretty easy to see, uh, and uh, it's a very, very plentiful bug up there. The first material I'm going to use is just some um, red fly foam. Uh, this is a real open cell foam, so it's very compressible. Uh, by using that very compressible material on here, I don't build up a lot of bulk on the fly. I'm going to use that for an underbody a little bit. Wrap it down real tight, and then clip off the end, and that becomes a little egg sac on this fly. The stoneflies don't really have a tail, but uh, I tie in a little bit of this uh, flash material. Um, it's really, really flashy. This is a product by a company called Mirage. This is their opal tinsel. Uh, and I use this a lot instead of crystal flash when I want some extra flash. What I'm doing is tying one strand off the back, and I take the other end, fold it back around, tie it in, so I've got a loop of this flash material in the back of the fly. And then I just clip, clip the loop off, so I've got two, two strands of flash off the back, and um, haven't really got the fish to confirm this, but my theory is that's like a little trailing bubble out the back. Um, for the rib on the fly, I'm going to use uh, some yellow barred, some yellow uh, dyed grizzly. And this feather doesn't have to be a real great feather. You can see it's, it's tapered, it's not real straight, the barbs aren't short. Um, it's not at all what you'd consider the right size for this fly. Uh, but I'm going to trim, trim all this off very short after I get it wrapped on so the barb length isn't important. I'm going to come about halfway up the hook shank and then uh, for the dubbing on this I like super fine dubbing. You can make very tight small bodies um, with this. This is a pale yellow. Uh, you may see in different areas of the country where the fly may be a little brighter. Also, it might be a little bit of a pale lime green. Uh, so you can vary that to match what you've got locally. Just make a very slender body. And I take one wrap behind the hackle um, to keep the tackle from sliding backwards on the fly and coming off the back of the body of the fly. Just gives it a little support. Once I've got the body on, I'm going to palmer this hackle and it just takes three or four wraps. You can see that hackle is huge for this fly. Tie it off, clip the tip off, and then I'm going to trim these barbs very, very short. Just spin the hook around, do each one. So now I've got as a rib with a little bit of fuzz. I'm going to take some more of the uh, Mirage flash material, and I don't need a lot. I use this a lot for underwings as well. Um, and uh, I think that the, uh, the flash this material gives the fly does a very good job of imitating motion. So I'm going to wrap that down the front half of the hook. I'm going to trim it off just about even with the egg sac. And then the wing, the actual wing, is going to be um, snowshoe hair. And the lighter you can get it, the better. This is actually one um, that we shot uh, in the winter. So it's white phase, or you can get the very light cream uh, if you're buying them. I'm going to clip, clip a little chunk out of the bottom of the foot. And you see it's got some real nice crinkle. It's got some translucence. 
Um, and you, a lot of times end up with a bigger clump than you need. And I just set that aside for the next fly. Need a little bit more. Kind of even it out just a little bit. Pull the really long fibers out, but I'm not going to stack it or anything like that. And then I like to measure this material. It's going to be a little bit longer than the underwing. I like to measure it on the fly and trim it before I tie it in. That makes it a lot easier to cover the butts up. And I don't have to lift them to trim them and move the wing. Come over the loose loop, catch it, wrap it down. Check it, make sure it looks all right. And then um, one thing that helps a lot when I'm guiding clients is uh, if I put just a little bit of splash of color on top of the flies, especially some of these smaller patterns, it helps them see the fly just a little bit better. So I put a little post of uh, that same red foam. You could use a pair of post yarn or anything you want um, in there uh, just for visibility. Uh, this is... Uh, Whiting dry fly neck, and I, you know, I like for this fly to use a barred ginger. This is a light barred ginger. And prepare the feather and tie it in right at the back of uh, what I call the shoulder of the fly, which is really all the wing material tied down on the hook shank. Wrap that down good. And because I've got a little bit of slope here where I've tied all this material off, the hackle stem tends to slide just a little bit sometimes down that slope towards the eye of the hook. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of dubbing and dub on top of all this, and it'll do two things now. It'll cover all that thread that I used to tie down the materials, and it also gives a little bit of a platform for the hackle to dig into so it doesn't slide so bad. I'm going to use as much hackle as I can get out of this feather. Tightly palmer it down that shoulder. If you never break materials and you're never wrapping close to the breaking point and you're not getting the full amount of strength durability out of your flies you could get. So you don't want to be breaking your thread and stuff all the time but if you never do you're not making your flies as durable as you could. Wrap that off at the head. Trim off the tip of that and then I like to hold all the hackle back Brush it back, clean up the head of the fly with the thread, whip finish it. And by doing that, I pull all that material back away from the eye of the hook. Make sure when I get out and get ready to fish that I don't have any problem putting that fly, putting the tippet through the eye of the fly. Last step. And turn the fly over, come in on the bottom, and just trim a V out of that. And let, that lets the fly sit just a little bit lower on the water, a little bit more of the body touching the surface of the water. That's it.